Hello, I'm Jennifer Witt, Project Director for ProjectManager.com. If a picture is worth a thousand words, a deliverables diagram saves a million meetings. So today what we want to talk about is the deliverables diagram for a project. So I'm sure this looks familiar, the actual project life cycle, initiating, planning, executing, controlling, and closing. And one of the most important things to know is the actual deliverables that are required to come into this process and the critical deliverables coming out. So today what we're going to talk about is the deliverables for each phase. We're going to talk about the inputs, we're going to talk about the outputs and how valuable they are. The deliverables diagram sets a vision for not only for the project manager but also for the team and the stakeholders so everyone knows where are we going, how are we going to get there, and what's due when. So the important deliverables for initiating is the business opportunity and really knowing why are we even doing this project. So many times we get in the thrust of a project and everyone is so focused on their task that they actually forget why are we doing this project and what is the main deliverable coming out from this project. So we submit a business opportunity actually from the business and it can come in from many different directions for many reasons, but the business opportunity identifies why we're doing the project. So that's the main input coming into the initiating process. So the process of working with the stakeholders and critical team members take that information and they process it and from the output of that becomes the project charter. Many people today may call that something different in their companies. It may be a statement of work, it could be an estimate response document, it could be called a proposal or anything, but that's the main document coming out that identifies what's the scope, what's the timeline, a high-level timeline, and what's the high-level budget of this project. Then the project charter feeds into the next phase, the planning phase. So the project charter and the lessons learned. It's very important to share the lessons learned, even if it's not the same type project, a similar type project, lessons learned that we can glean things to actually improve performance of this project. So the project charter and the lessons learned feed into the planning process, including all the important stakeholders and people on the planning team get that information, and from there is produced the project plan. And from the pr project plan, all the sub, sub plans that identify the deliverables diagram. Again, it's very important to identify a picture, a picture for the team, not only for the project manager, but the team and the stakeholders to say what's going to be done when and what's going to be delivered. So a very important document, deliverables diagram, communications plan. Communications plan is very important. One of the issues that I see over many teams is the communication plan and knowing what level of of information needs to be communicated to the right level of person. As we know, the project team needs to know information totally different than the executive committee or the stakeholders or the change control board. It's different levels of information, so it's important to identify who needs to know what, when, and how. So in today's times, people get so many emails, so some people now are texting information, the beauty of the, the mobile market and the texting or even collaborative software where collaborative systems people are using now social media so it's important to identify how the team needs that information do they need it real time or how do they need it best as well as the risk and issues knowing what risk or how are we going to manage risk if risk occurs how are we going to identify them how are we going to mitigate them and who are the actual decision makers that make those important decisions for us. And the issues, what is, how are we going to manage and track issues? At what point are we going to escalate those and who are the important decision makers? And then the change management pro process. Uh, we all know change will happen and so it's important to know up front how, what is the process we're going to use to manage those changes? How are those changes going to come in? Uh, how are they going to be assessed? and who are the people who need to decide how we're going to manage those changes. And then procurement. How are we going to procure our resources and the assets we need for the team? Uh, are we going to actually get those from in-house? Are we going to use those from important vendor partners? What is the process that needs to be done? What are the approval levels that need to be made? At what time? 
as well as the cost management. How are we going to manage cost? How are we going to uh, measure the cost? And so it's important to know up front these important things. And then the schedules. How are we going to manage the schedule? As, as we know, we're going to baseline the schedule. We're going to baseline all of these things. And then, but what happens when the schedule changes? How are we going to manage that? So those are the important subplans identified in the project plan, and that's why it's so valuable. It actually becomes the game plan or the execution plan that feeds into now the executing and controlling phase of the project. So once we now have the project charter, because we want the project charter actually, remember, maintains the baseline, the agreement and the approval for this project, and uh, what the project is, what the budget is, and the important stakeholders. Again, really keeping us in line of why are we even doing this project. We find that so many projects fail because uh, people aren't tracking the baseline against the original charter, the original plan. And that's what taking the charter and the plan, taking that into executing and controlling, actually executing that, and from there becomes the performance reports. So now we take the performance reports and we measure those against baselines to know where are we in the progress of the project and what are the things that we need to do using the project plan, how do we get those things back in line so we're now meeting the original goal. And if we're not meeting the original goal, how we, what are the steps we need to take to actually change it, modify it, modify the baseline and get the appropriate approvals. And if we do that, we actually find that we can decrease the project failure rate by actually implementing project management best practices. Then the issues and risk logs. So again, important to not only track them but log the, the risk or the issues that occur. So we know when they occurred, what are the issues that occurred, what are the risks that occurred, what action did we take, and who actually approved or signed off on the action to be taken. Then the change logs. As we know, we said change will occur, so actually logging what change did occur when and what decisions were made, who made the decisions, and then the project progress, knowing how are we doing against the baseline of the project, and then the deliverables. So at this point, the executing and controlling, we're now actually producing the deliverables for the project, so we can actually begin of all the deliverables that get made, the, the ultimate deliverable is the actual project. So the, the performance reports, the project progress, the project logs and deliverables, as the project comes to a close, all feed into the, the closing pro, pro, uh, part of the project. So saving the best for last, but not forgotten, the closing phase actually is very important to get the product acceptance from the users, the stakeholders, the agreement that the project actually did meet the intent of the project and all of the baseline or performance measures that had to be met, the final and actual reports of how do we do against the baseline, how do we actually um, measure on this project, the project documents so that we're actually archiving, saving, maintaining the documentation, the historical, the, the history of this project, so if we need to revisit again what happened and when, and if we need to take that information to the next phase of a project, or maybe even a subsequent or similar project. And then the lessons learned. Always knowing what lessons did we learn, what did we glean, what do we want to take forward, because as we know, it's going to feed back into the next project. So again, we feel like if a picture save, if a picture is worth a thousand words, it's going to save a million meetings in project management. So if you need any other additional tips, tools, techniques, or templates, please visit us at projectmanager.com. Thank you.